Hey, YouTube over here, over here. Hey, YouTube, welcome back to the Patriots Podcast YouTube channel. You've been clicking around the internet. You've been looking for Google Ads content. Nothing's really connected, but now you found us. When it didn't connect, it made you a little blue, a little sad. <laughs> but now you found us. So thanks for being here. You're a great person. You um, are a seeker of knowledge, and I want you to do what a lot of people are doing these days. Click the like button, support the channel. And we have a great Google Ads podcast episode for you today. Yes. And you get you guys get a sample, just a sample of Jason's poetry before we begin. I, I, I almost felt like we were there, just a couple more stanzas, and it would have been just perfect. But okay, whenever you're ready, buddy. Roses are red, violets are blue. Every other form of marketing compared to search is worse than poo. <laughs> oh. Come on, Chris. That's, oh. that's off the top. That's two seconds. Come oh, on. man. Amazing. Lit. Like the kids say. Uh, emoticon fire. Is that what they do? No, that's what, grown men, that's what grown men do apparently these days. Grown men do that. Okay, good. A little picture that's what, <laughs> cartoons. That's what grown fire. men are doing these days. Fire, fire. 100. Thumbs up. All right. Let's get into it. Hey, Jimmy. Hi. Would you like fast food tonight or a frozen dinner? Because I don't have time to make you a home-cooked meal because me and your stepfather are going to roller derby tonight. Um, I'm okay. I don't really want anything. Okay, Jimmy. Don't wait up for us. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by greatest Google Ads manager on the planet I know, the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, how's it going? I am honored to be doing a podcast with the award-winning, award-winning Jason Rothman, uh, actually uh, nominated and won for the world's greatest Google Ads manager. Uh, I claim it. Jason has the trophy for it. So uh, honored to be here. Thank you, Jason. Um, not quite Thanksgiving yet. We're still cranking out the material. Jason, it's not time yet to pull out the turkey. And all those other things, or the baster, uh, eat. or yes, that I I don't I don't make the turkey, so I don't know what kind of materials go into doing it. I, just I do. It. And with that, we thank you guys for joining us. Um, we got we got some cool stuff to talk about today, um, and I want to mention, as we mentioned, something brand new with the show. You can send us things. If you have an extra $100 bill, if you have uh, a set of shoes that are gently worn, pre uh, you can check our show notes and send them to us. We have a new mailing address and let us know what you think about us. Write that on the back of a $20 bill. Um, if it's uh, negative, if it's positive, a $100 bill is all we accept. And uh, thanks for your support. Um, so today, Jason, we got some cool stuff to talk about. Before we get into that, let's talk about Optio. Optio is a tool that I use, that Jason uses, that we use to get things done faster, to make changes to campaigns instead of trying to rely on the interface of Google Ads, which is great, but Sometimes you need more. You need creative ideas. You need email alerts to tell you about things that you may not have seen. Everyone's busy. You've got a lot of accounts to manage. You've got a lot of things to do. Maybe you're a one-man show. You've got a lot of hats to wear, and you need to get things done quickly. Optio is a great optimization tool to help you get things done faster in Google Ads. And it's mobile-friendly. You can use your phone to get it done, right? You don't have to. You, you don't even have to use a uh, a downloaded app. You can just go straight to opto opteo dot com slash psp and try it out. Let them know you want this six week extended trial because that's a special offer straight for our listeners. 
and we want to thank them for their sponsorship. Thanks, Chris. And I want to thank Directive Consulting from directiveconsulting.com. Directive Consulting helps B2B, enterprise, e-commerce, retail, and startups with online marketing. They do it all. SEO, pay-per-click, conversion rate optimization, content marketing, social media, digital PR, analytics. They do it all. And they do it for very competitive industries. B2B, enterprise, e-commerce, retail, startups as we're going to talk about on today's podcast it's google ads we talk about google ads but depending on what kind of business you're in what kind of business you're advertising for things can be very different and we have a very unique example on today's show and it just shows how different different industries are when it comes to online marketing and directive works with some of the most competitive industries b2b and enterprise e-commerce they do great work check out their website look at some some of the brands they've worked with look at their case studies and most importantly, get a free custom proposal, directiveconsulting.com. Jason, you ever you ever panic? You ever get panicked with Google Ads? I know you're an award-winning manager, but do you ever panic with Google Ads? No, I panic with people, but I don't panic mm. with Google Ads. I, I panic okay. when people get panicked about Google Ads. And then they uh, want to know point. why the last hour's results are this or why they didn't see themselves there or things like that. And uh, <clears throat> I blew up this week on someone. I straight up blew up, Chris. <laughs> and uh, Nice. And uh, I don't that, know. I go? just – what do you mean? How did it go? Yeah, did you keep the job or did oh, you of like course. hang up on the oh, – oh, of course you did. I'm absolutely <laughs> indispensable to everyone I work with. And <laughs> I'm just extremely good at what I do. So, so even they work if you with their, scream and yell at with, someone yeah. on the phone, they will still continue to say, "Oh, I'm. Oh, you're still, you're still my man." But uh, no, that goes unsaid. Mostly, they just say, "Thank you for setting me straight," and then we carry on. Ah, so amazing, amazing. Chris, I was going to read a review of the week, you know, and I see all these great reviews, but. I just, none of them grabbed me enough in terms of like being flattering enough, in terms of complimenting the show enough, in terms of really conveying the value that we provide, not only for Google ads, but for life and the afterlife and the entire universe and all universes that have ever been made. (laughs) And they were also kind of short. I saw some that were four sentences, five cents. I want like 25 sentences. I want Mm. an ode to how great this show is. So I'll check back next week. Okay. And we'll see what's there, and we'll see if we have a, a review of the week, but not this week. Sorry. Oh, well, that's sad. All right. Well, um, I don't have any uh, loving emails that were sent this week through our site, um, so I don't have anything to read either. So I guess we're just going to have to get into the show. The which, Are you serious? Hold on. Hold on. It's only ten, It's only like eight minutes in right now. Um, I, I don't know. Do we – Chris, the people are clamoring for us to talk about something except for Google Ads. They don't know what to do if we talk about Google Ads within the first 17 and a half minutes of the show. Don't do it to them, Chris. Okay, well, um, I guess we could talk about the weather. (laughs) Um, Lots of things to discuss. Or we could just talk about what they actually subscribe for. I, I guess we could do that. All right, well. All right, let me, let, I, me start, let me start it off here, Chris. Go As ahead. I was talking about earlier, it's called Google Ads. And we get on this show and we make it sound so easy. And in a lot of industries, for a lot of different advertisers out there, things work great. It really is easy sometimes. Like someone is an office mover. That's what they do. They move people's offices, commercial, all that kind of stuff. And then someone needs an office mover, so they go to Google. And then they type in office mover and then they see the ad, they click, they call, they fill out a lead form, they become new business and it works so easy. And if you listen to the paid search podcast, you know, all your settings, and all that kind of stuff, anybody can do it. But then there's sometimes Chris, when you get into a Google ads campaign, you start running one and things don't work so easy. And there's a ton of different examples of when things are not easy. And we're going to cover one specifically today. So I want you to describe that situation. And I also want to know why this is on your mind. I always like to know that, why why things cross your mind. 
Well, um, okay. So you asked two questions and I forgot the first one. Um, what, what is this specific to... situation? Okay. Gotcha. So, um, Jason, as you know, I do uh, hourly consulting. I always like to drop that in because it's very important that I continue to feed my family. Um, and a lot of things that I hear is how many cups do you have? You have so many drinks. So it's amazing. I watch every time you drink one liquid and follow it with a chaser of something else. One of them's dark. One of them, I can't tell what it is. No, no comments on what you're drinking. What that I don't is. have, honestly, I don't have enough drinks. I'm panicking over here. I know you see multiple cups and you're like, oh, he's got enough. I'm straight up panicking because I'm parched and I need some more liquid. <laughs> Are you calling? Are you calling to help to get help with that? Is that what that ring is? <laughs> let's hear. Let's let's wait. You, let's see if they pick up. Can I get some SOS hydration? Oh no. Oh, I guess she's out with her boyfriend or something. So <laughs> <laughs> she didn't answer. We're gonna have to continue. That's all right. We'll have to continue. Okay, I'm sorry. So <laughs> let's go. I don't have she's enough. So drinks. thirsty. <laughs> I'm panicking. Okay, you want to talk about what? panic? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some more diet okay. coke. I'm gonna lay it out. I'm gonna lay all this out. out. Yeah. When you come oh. back, I'll have laid it all out. It'll be okay. your turn. Sounds all right. Good. Here we go. Okay. So <laughs> there he goes. Okay. Um, all right. So you're panicked. You, 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 you have a campaign that um, is running along fairly well. Okay. And maybe there's a one product or one service, or maybe the entire campaign is not working as you would expect it. You're not getting impressions at all, or impressions have stopped. Um, and it's nothing that you've done wrong. It's, uh, you know, the keywords have just stopped performing. New competitors have come in. Something has changed beyond what you've done and made this a significantly more difficult uh, scenario for you. So you have to decide, okay, I'm going to have to do something new here. I'm going to have to try an entire new strategy. And the thing is, if you've been running a bunch of keywords, if you've been doing a bunch of new keywords, you've been trying new things, you might not have an ability to go beyond what you've already been trying. You say, well, I already have 320 keywords. How am I supposed to come up with another you know, 45 or 100 more? I don't really have another angle to do this with. So this is a situation I see people a lot in because they, they say, this isn't profitable for me. I'm not getting what I want. And I don't really know how to add. They, they think that the keyword planner uh, is going to give them what they need. They think that uh, the there's going to be some new uh, match type that they can try. Maybe if they try a bunch of modified broad with some other stuff thrown in, we'll start working. But in the end, it just doesn't work out the way they want. So that's the situation. And the solution that we're going to talk about today is really unique because you're forming a targeting method that does not base its entire strategy on keywords. You do have to use some keywords, but the keywords are not really there for the precision of the targeting. Instead, we're going to talk about audiences, specifically targeted mm. audiences. And this is this is something we've, we've danced around before, but this is a specific strategy that we're going to lay out that could be really revolutionary to maybe uh, give you an extra bump or mm. maybe get something rolling again where you're just kind of on a dry patch. You don't really know what to do. Uh, here's the thing. We never talk Google ads outside the show. <laughs> like, like no, um, that's true. <laughs> and so the thing is, we talk about hobbies and all that kind of stuff, real life. So I'm just having trouble placing you in a position where there's panic with the campaign, like no one's searching for the keywords. So give me give me some background on what's happening. Like what sparked this? How often do you run into this? Is it, and we don't have to get into the industry, but is right. it an industry thing? Is it a location thing? It, what's it's, happening here? It's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, so what sparks this and what you might want to apply this to is often things that don't, fit into the normal advertising box and you think well you know, what's a normal advertising box well if your keywords if your if your suggested keywords 
never really look like what you want. If you're if you're advertising some in-depth B2B industrial type of service, something that's kind of between two major services, but it's its own separate service. You know, it's it's not one thing, it's not another thing, but it's right in between those two things. And Google never formally recognizes those with the right kind of keywords or the right kind of uh, quality scores that this could be the thing for you because you need to figure out how you can get some traffic and, and, and from search think outside of those typical boxes. So yeah, I mean, this, that's where it comes from is but Chris, frustration let me... with not being able to, to, to formalize the right kind of keyword, because I don't know how people are looking for this. So, so it's either like an industry that people aren't searching for yet or people, or it's an industry, it's a product that people use or service they use, but they don't really search for it exactly. It's maybe a little adjacent to the main searches. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Just to, just to tell you my perspective here, when it comes to search, my biggest thing with like, if I can uh, work with someone, if I want to work with someone, one of my biggest turnoffs is if someone's not searching, if, if their keywords are not searched for, because my whole thing with search advertising, it's like, okay, line them up very straightforward campaigns that I know are going to work because I like when things work office mover boom someone's searching for office mover divorce lawyer in Memphis boom they're Mm. searching for uh, that yeah they're searching for divorce lawyer in Memphis I know it's going to work because people are searching for that exactly so when someone comes to me with a product or service that's either new or adjacent and people aren't searching for it totally spot on um, I've been very very hesitant to take on that work um, like at all, like it's, I just, I don't say, I don't panic. Like we talked about at the top of the show, but I don't do it. I mean, I don't go, I don't really do that with search, but you, like you said, you're seeing a lot more campaigns. Um, question for you. I know we can't say this strategy we're going to talk about today is guaranteed to work. Cause that's a stupid thing to say, because sometimes things just don't work, but do you see this work sometimes? What, what, what? Jump to the end before we talk about the strategy. What happens? Do you find keywords? Do you find that adjacent searches do convert? What happens here? Like, and, and does this ever work? Yeah, so it's a good question. So the end solution that this whole process could eventually lead to is essentially finding some searches or some uh, niches that you hadn't thought of before. Like, oh. oh wow, I never really thought that people that want this mm. also would be interested in that. So um, there's, there's, there's an ability to connect some lines and that may is, that's typically going to be done with the search terms, right? I mean, it always narrows down to the same thing. If you're really going to get some solid data and you can't rely on the keyword planner because it's just not really working for you and you need to generate some traffic, Um, this is the kind of situation that usually arises is you do this, what we're going to talk about, and you find some search terms that work well for you, or even better scenario is you actually find a way to slowly tweak the system so that the system itself could be profitable, uh, for you, at least, uh, you know, at least on a qualified traffic, maybe, maybe it's not conversions, but, uh, Mm. you're at least able to get people to come to the site and engage at a certain bounce rate. Get on a remarketing list, something like that. Yeah. Stuff like that. And it takes a few more steps to enter, to to educate them. Yeah. So, and and, and we'll talk about how to reduce that risk, uh, in our, in our process here. Okay. So final, uh, final intro question here. You do find, you do use it to find search terms that are spot on once you find them that happens sometimes you said but then does it sometimes happen where you end up getting search terms that are not what you think would work because they're not spot on but they actually do convert and you keep targeting them um yes and yes and no um i mean they're they're I don't really know if they're going to work or not. Well, I, I feel like to answer that question, we need to get into exactly how this works because now it's now, now I'm, I'm answering questions and being rather obscure with it. So let, let's, let's get into, to what it is. Let's talk about what it is. And I think by that, I'll answer your question a little better. So okay, this whole thing, whole thing that we're alluding to is nothing new, but it's just a strategy that we're going to lay out here. It's using broad keywords 
And when I say broad, I don't mean modified broad. I mean pure broad keywords, which we have talked about many times before. Using broad keywords plus ta uh, targeted audiences. Okay. And this is something that's, let's say, relatively new. Google Ads is, you know, pretty old now. It's been around for a while. So it's relatively new. It's only in the past couple of years that we can add audiences to uh, keywords. Chris, the title, title of today's episode? Pure broad keywords plus targeted audiences. Leave it at that. Little mystery. It's a, it's a little. It, it's a little on the nose. I was going to think a more of an emotional pull of the answer to your panicked boss. I don't know. Like the answer to all your Google ads. Can't find answers. keywords. Don't panic. Here's a strategy. There. Boom. See. Boom. Yeah, boom. Boom. This is a boom show. Hey, um, so that's how the magic happens. Oh, it is. You guys just saw it. That's so organic. It's just amazing. Um, okay, so here's how it works. And I'm going to step you through step by step on how this is going to look. So first, I'm going to suggest you start a brand new campaign. Okay, don't do this in your current campaign because you're going to need to uh, use certain bidding strategies and you're going to need to use certain... Um, uh, targets that could mess up what you have in your other campaign. So I'm going to suggest start a brand new campaign. All right, you with me? Set up a new campaign, make it uh, a search campaign, and uh, don't use any goals set for no goals custom. And now turn off your uh, search partners and display targeting. Okay, you with me there? You've turned those two off. Now we're going to scroll down. And we're going to get to an area that you probably scroll over all the time. It's the audience bar, right? And it's not even expanded. They expect usually that people aren't going to use it because it's not very typical that people use it. So it's not expanded. You're going to expand it, okay? And this is, this is where there's a couple different strategies. And we're going to go with strategy number one on this first one. So for the first one, what you're going to do is you're going to choose a couple um, – well, no, let's say, let's say um, you're going to choose one audience, okay? And I'm not going to get into the difference between in-market and affinity and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't. We've been I'll do it too many times. I'm just no, <laughs> you do. <laughs> no, the thing please. with Google Ads, Chris, and, and like training people, on the, you, there really is like a lot of avenues to go down at every, every turn, you know? Oh, yeah. That's what, that's, that's why we're. We're so freaking successful. Is because okay, but for but for the rows. sake but for the sake of the show, let's pick out our first kind of audience since we're layering here or combining okay. is the word. Okay. So for this first audience, let's say that we are a widget company that wants to sell to parents, and what what this little widget that we sell is some type of um, special spoon that is not as messy when you feed a a baby, an infant, a toddler. Uh, something something like that okay so we're selling it and people don't really search for that but a lot of people would be interested in it because um it would be a great tool to have but it's not the kind of thing you sit down and say i need to buy a new you know no spoon. mess spoon for my toddler okay so that's who we're selling to what we do is we target an audience and make sure you choose target in your settings not observation make sure you use target and choose inside of uh there's a an in-market audience called infant and toddler feeding <laughs> is that really there is okay there so we're gonna we're gonna do target we're gonna target people who are parents that's the first audience well no nah, not necessarily i i'm oh that, so, the, so this so this in-market toddler feeding that's the first audience yeah that's the one okay. and only audience for this for, for situation number one, the one and only audience is uh, infant and toddler feeding. Excuse me. That's I was it. jumping ahead. I did my homework. I'm sorry. I was just jumping ahead too far. <laughs> I okay, know what so, you're getting to. Okay, but just targeting observation. We don't have to go down a road here, yeah. but observation means it's not going to lock it down to just people in that audience. It's just going to observe the data with those mm -hmm. people in the audience versus when they're not in the audience. Targeting means your ads will only show to people in that audience correct exactly okay That's so it. we're going to target that audience target it yep in okay. market so, toddler feeding in, yeah in market 
infant and toddler feeding. That is the, that's an actual audience. It's an in-market. So that means what in-market means is someone that is actively searching within a certain time period. Uh, and we don't have the data on why they're in there. Google has just put them in there based on their recent search uh, history and viewing history. Yep. Okay. And at, from that point, we're going to go into, you know, the normal stuff that you're all used to, um, you know, write some ads, blah, 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 blah. And then the keywords. Now it's important. I didn't say this, but go back in time and you need to make sure you use manual bidding because you don't want to do this with, uh, it certainly don't want to do it with maximized conversions. You don't want to do it with uh, CPA targeting or anything. I'm going to suggest uh, manual bidding and you're going to pick broad keywords. The keywords that you might choose might look something like um, uh, infant feeding tips, how to feed baby, toddler feeding spoon, uh, baby feeding help, clean toddler feeding. So you really do, since people aren't probably aren't searching for this exact product directly, you're actually trying to show up on informational top of fun or high in the funnel searches. Mm -hmm. Right. People looking for blog articles or help articles, basically. Yeah. To try and sell okay. them um, something. And, and, and the idea here is that, you, and you said it, top of the funnel. So we're going for more of a billboard type of approach. You know, it, it's going to be a lot of traffic. And the great thing about this is that we've qualified the traffic twice. We've qualified it with some very broad keywords. And we've qualified it with the fact that they have recently been doing some searches in this arena. Or on okay. pages about this kind of stuff, according to... Been, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Been looking at parent stuff, toddler information, things like that. And Google has placed them into this audience, which by the way, I when I was doing this, when I was testing this, uh, when I chose this audience, um, I got like um, 1 billion to 10 billion people is who fit in this, <laughs> right? I mean, so we're not talking about you taking an audience, you know, uh, in, in scrubbing it down to just, you know, only the parents in your area. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a worldwide uh, thing. So, you know, it's still going to be a very large audience. But the great thing is you go from, you know, millions and millions of impressions and you've whittled it down to just a few thousands of impressions that can be showing up. So, so they have to be in the market it. for infant and toddler feeding. They're in whatever location you want to sell stuff in. And then mm -hmm. in terms of their keywords, you're going uh, whatever keywords you want to go in, stuff that's related. You're saying broad because you want to show up on a bunch of stuff and you don't really know what the keywords are yet. So you're going to use broad to kind of see the search terms and see what you show up on. Speaking of broad, should I put in the word baby one word? Like let that's, give some give give people some kind of qualification on pure broad. We don't have to do our pure broad like a pro episode, but there's got to be some qualifier. Are you saying it's got to be three words or is yeah. there, or I mean, some way to think about it? I I mean, it's it. People or would you do baby with, with a five cent bid? I mean, you tell me. Yeah, that's what that's what I would say. I, I would say people always want us to come up with, you know, definite rules. And the fact is, everyone's experience will be different. We can't ever tell you what the right formula is because we're in the same boat as you. We're testing this as well. So I don't know, but to give you an idea, I would suggest something with two to four words. And as Jason said, if you want to try baby or toddler or baby eating, you know, something like that, that's really high funnel, really obscure. I think Jason had it right right there. Throw a five cent bid on it you know, put something really small on it because, and that's the last point. The last point on this is that you can do this and get traffic because you've qualified it in two different ways. Um, now <clears throat> throw some low bids on there. And the, the amount of risk that you have here is very minimal. Well, you're the risk is your daily budget. Your, the, just so everyone knows the overall risk, like you got to protect yourself. So make sure your daily budget is something you're okay to lose. Um, and then, of course, daily budget these days, there's something like they're allowed to overspend your budget by up to 200% or something like that at any given day. So if you put in 10, it might be 20 or $30 spend you could get. But like you're saying, Chris, but that you won't protect... continue. That won't continue. No, just over to, the course of the sure. month, it'll even out to $10, whatever you set it as. You'll be right. limited by budget and all that. Um, you protect yourself with some kind of broad keywords. 
maybe something in your area, something in your topic. You protect yourself by controlling your bids, going super low bid because it's so, so broad. You control yourself with that targeted audience. Um, one thing I want to say, Chris, is just like you're saying, some people might use one word broad keyword to see what happens with low bids. Some people might use five word broad keywords or four word broad keywords with maybe a little higher bids. But of course, the nice thing about manual bids, the nice thing about Google ads, everything is changeable anytime. You can, you can modify keywords. You can add, you can make them longer. You can pause them. You can increase your bids, decrease your bids. So it's not so much that we're saying this, this, and that. It's saying, no, this is the strategy. You've got a lot of tools within it. But so far, just to recap, your first option is a targeted audience combined with broad keywords. Is that a, a good way to break it down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Exactly right. <clears throat> and the thing is, um, you say, well, Chris, why don't I just throw some modified broad in there and stuff like that? The thing is, you have to understand the we're going to die one keywords. day, honestly, because we're going to die one day. Okay. I'm so, there we go. I'm so sick of things being so slow with Google ads. Hmm. They don't have to be slow with Google ads. You can start, I mean, you know what I'm saying, Chris? Like, yeah, we're not doing modified sure. because we're not deep in the funnel here. This is a totally different scenario hmm. where we don't know our keywords and we're trying stuff out. So if you're going to try stuff out, let's get naked and no modifiers and try stuff out get freaky boom, boom. yeah I, I, yeah perfect exactly right because now chris um, what i need from you is i need put that modifier skill training in terms of how do i convey that 100 percent accurate answer when i'm talking to a stupid person without mm. blowing up on them i don't know how to do that chris <laughs> i'm that's trying in, to learn but i have we're, right. we're gonna talk Reach about that in the patreon, patreon. yeah because <laughs> it just angers me because if why would you brought up modifiers because people will bring up modifiers, but yeah, it's not about modifiers. Yeah, there, yeah. It's we we say this sometimes. It's you are not such always a cool that we say this. cucumber. I need maybe it's the CrossFit. It is. Maybe it's the it uh, every. I don't know what you do. I left. I I left on the CrossFit floor today. I was wiped, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. I'll I'll say this um, just as a quick note before we move into tactic number two which won't take very long um the the idea here is that broad keywords don't match word to word they don't match the way that you put a plus and it has to be baby to baby right if you put a plus on baby Modifier, it's going to yeah. have to match to baby to baby in the search the search term has to have baby in it because you would put, put a plus there if you don't put any plus or i would meaning. qualify a broad match keyword as something that is topic to topic theme to theme idea right. to idea and this is the, this is what we're looking for we don't want a, a word to word match we want a topic to topic match a, an idea to idea because we're trying to be very creative we're trying to try new things it's just like a hose it's just like a hose when you have a hose and then you put that little uh gun on the top of it and then you have your different settings so you can do like the setting where it's just a little pointed little uh spray you know, direct, then you can do like a, a little shower drizzle. That's maybe like modified. Then you can do a steam or a mist. That's what broad is. Oh, Just. Wow. I, I've, I've never had one of those. those. Those must be for rich people. I usually just use my thumb. Uh, which is the level that I'm at for my hose. One hand in uh, his pants efficiency. or has a beer in one hand and the other hand, just halfway on the hose. Just. <laughs> yeah, good. I can see that. I, I can see it. that. <laughs> All right. So tactic two, you guys are going to like this, this we've waited to share this one until 90% of the audience has dropped out. <laughs> now it's Chris, just what you are guys. you talking about? We have the number one group. God, Chris is a vet. Chris um, wants someone to just pull out a whip and punish them because he likes the pain. He, he always is uh, yeah. putting our show down. I don't understand why. I don't know. It cracks me up. Why? why would you it say that? It cracks me up. Like, because because I think I'm a very proficient kind to, of guy. Do you want to be beat? Like, do you want to be spanked? Like, what is it? What is with you? Like, is that what you, like, why would you say that? It's funny because I, I, if it wasn't for you, I would say everything important in the first five minutes and the whole show would be 10 minutes long like that. So I'm glad you're here because if it was just me, I would 
put all this in a video that was made for YouTube and it would be seven minutes long and it would be over. So, yeah. Right. And it would suck because there's things called context and scenarios yeah. and flavor and color. And you're trying to give people a full colorless, picture of what's going on. Flavorless, boring AdWords manager. So I'm so glad that I have the award-winning Google Rothman. What is your name? Jason Rothman. <laughs> All right. You are loopy today, man. What is with you? You're being you silly. You're being silly, Chris. All right. Option number two. This is a whole new thing because you can take two audiences and tell Google, I want you to combine these audiences and find the people that are in both. Mm -hmm. And you say, I can hear them. I hear Josh out there. Josh is saying in his car, why don't you just do it in your first scenario? Put both audiences in your first one. And that's the same thing. You just add mm -hmm. two. You add toddler feeding and you add parents. And now that's it. And I say, oh, Josh, first, watch out. There's someone breaking in front of you. You're gonna, you're gonna, while you're freaking out to a stupid thought, you're gonna have a rear end and it's gonna, it's gonna be horrible. Second, number two, you're wrong. You're wrong because the way that the audiences work is that when you add two audiences to one ad group or even to one campaign, it treats it as a or situation. They're either gonna be in parents or they're going to be in um, the infant toddler feeding in market audience. They're not going to be in both. You don't lessen your targeting by adding more audiences. Just in, in the same way that you don't lessen your targeting if you add more keywords. If I add 50 keywords, that's no mm. more precise than if I add five. Um, the idea is that this is an or situation. So uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, please unsubscribe and uh, don't yell at us anymore. That's very offensive. Um, I, w I instead want to combine. <laughs> <don't> so, <laughs> so here's, here's what I want you to do. All right. So for the rest of you, here's what I want you to do. Um, when you set up your campaign, when you set up a, um, a, new, uh, a new ad group, let's say let's do it in a new ad group, you look for this other option in your audience tab. And I don't have it in front of me. So Jason, you can tell me if I get the, word, the words wrong. You look for uh, the combined audiences, which is going to be in the browse section. Yeah, in browse. At the yeah. very bottom, it's going to be combined audiences this pops up a whole new window that you've never worked in and it has an and or situation where you can choose one audience and then click narrow your audience to then combine and create a custom new combined audience it's it's a whole new tactic and now you've taken something that you that might be 10 billion people and reduced it to 5 million because now it is both demographic having to do with they are likely parents, and they are looking stuff up about toddler baby feeding information. You've combined those into your own unique in-market audience, and you're targeting just that. And everything else is just the same. Add the keywords in. Everything can be just the same, but now you've created this custom uh, combined audience. And Chris, what, um, another thing you can do is when you're inside of an active campaign and you go to audiences and then you hit add audiences and you go to browse, you'll also get that combined option. And like an example, you had written out pest control, but pest control, but also homeowners, um, you can tell the system, hey, whatever keywords I'm targeting, only show them targeted to targeting to people combined who are in the market for pest control services and also a homeowner in the homeowner audience. Yeah. There you go. And so, I mean, we were talking, the, there's just a lot of possibilities, man. Cause we were talking about things yeah. people don't search for. You're not sure of the keywords say you are sure of the keywords just to throw a sidebar in you're confident in pest control, but it's expensive. It's competitive. What if you loosen that up and throw broad on there, but then make it, only to show to people who are in the market for pest control services and homeowners. There's a lot you can yeah. do with combined audiences for targeting. And also, Chris, it's not just one and one combined. You can do three combined audiences, like three individual ones. You can do two combined audiences and a combined, an audience on top of that. Like they have to be in two audiences 
oh, excuse me, you're right, any of these audiences. So basically, you can just do more than two, is my point. Yeah, um, but you can do, yeah. I think you it's... Could um, an, you could set up an and situation where you have um, something that is uh, pest control and uh, homeowner. That can be an and situation. Then you could set up another or situation that combines the two different ones. It, it, I mean, there's a lot. We'd have to... I think it's too much to go into, but play around with it. There's Ooh, a lot by of the possibilities way, Chris, there. And you can exclude people on yes, top of that. Yeah. It's beautiful. You just ruined next week's episode. That was the entire episode. That was it. That was the highlight. I was going to share it at minute 42. Someone sent this man to podcast school. I didn't ruin it. I teased it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, the I, worst I, podcaster I with a successful podcast. I think that's what I'm looking at, right? <laughs> that's now. it. The worst podcaster with the best partner. That's what it is. I found a good partner who can make my something show. like that. Something like that. So, Chris, interesting. Still broad keywords, but now you're combining two audiences. I like that. Now, yeah. what if what if I want to try all this out? What if I have an idea in option one where I have an audience and broad keywords, and then I want to do option two, and I have multiple audiences and broad keywords? Is it mm -hmm. okay to put these in different ad groups and do ad group audience audiences yeah. at the ad group level, and then yeah, name I your would, ad groups that way? <clears throat> my suggestion is to not do this at the campaign level targeting instead to do this at ad group targeting. In my example at the beginning, I discussed adding it at the campaign level, but if you really want to get detailed and you want to try uh, try different things, set up an ad group that has one type of targeting. Maybe it's just a single uh, audience. Maybe it's just one in-market audience and it's targeted with the keywords. Then take the exact same keywords and try that with a combined audience. Um, so there's a lot to play with. And one last thing I'll say, here, here's where the creativity can can begin. Um, try opening up your geographic targeting. Um, try playing with uh, your ad scheduling. Try playing with uh, some different keywords. Throw some really broad keywords in. Remove um, with low bits. Uh, with low bits. Right. Oh yeah. D thank you. All of this goes. Do not keep throw the safety two, on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Leave the safety on. Yeah, exactly right. Try try it with uh, limiting everything to just a certain age group. You mm. know, um, every time you do this, because you're using broad keywords. An income and, demographic. And, yeah, in, yeah. Who's looking for all these specialty do. spoons? Top twenty percent of income. Yeah, stuff like that. So I mean, there's a lot you could play with, and the the difference is, you say, well, Chris, I can do all that with my original campaign. You're right, but you're using restrictive keywords you're using modified broad you're using phrase you're using exact this allows you to have a very wide keyword well, your, base your original within. campaign with the keyword straightforward keywords it's already working right. so yeah. you don't need it i mean you can do all this stuff to make it even better but it's working because people are searching mm -hmm. for what you offer and you're getting leads yeah and it's good yeah this is like when oh man we're not getting any we don't even know what keywords to target what keywords could you target? It doesn't seem like people search for it. The beautiful, have, let me ask you this. I think the beautiful thing about both of these options, audiences plus broad keywords, basically, is that you go from a situation where you're getting like 13 impressions a day because you don't know what keywords to target, the keywords you thought to target, no one's searching for. And the beautiful thing about this, because I'm thinking it would go this way, I want you to confirm or deny have you ever run into a situation where you didn't at least get volume and there was something to judge? Like the beautiful thing here is that it looks to me like there's always going to be action and you'll get some results and you'll, maybe you won't go way up the hill, but you'll at least start making progress moving up that hill. Is it, have you ever run into a situation where this doesn't work like at all and give you anything to go on? Or does it always kind of give you some clues to at least try something else? Yeah, no. I mean, it, it, it'll give you nothing to go on if you put the put bids that are just absolutely too low and you don't open up your keywords enough. If you don't go through this. Okay. Right so it's way, not magic. You got to do it the right way. Yeah, You're going to have to do okay. it the right way. And, and it will eventually deliver clicks. There are billions of clicks out there that That's you can true. get. The only re the reason you would not be getting it is because you're too restrictive on one of these aspects. Bids, or your location. You, you, 
too tight. You you know, it may not work with a two mile radius. Yeah. You know, it's too small, you know, so. Let me just ask you uh, personally. Um, oh, no, no. You know what? We're going to save it for Patreon. What I want to ask mm-hmm. you in Patreon, because it's kind of a business thing. Do you like doing this? How do you communicate when you do this? Are clients Ooh. open to it? Do they do they look Ooh. at their search terms and call you up and say you're the worst person ever because they don't like their search terms and they didn't understand the strategy? Or do they this. go, Chris, everyone else has failed and this strategy finally started working and you're the best person ever? I mean, which one is it? I want to know these things. Yeah. yeah. And how long do you scar? Mm-hmm. You see this scar here? That's when I got in a fist fight with a client about this strategy right there. Yeah. All right. With that said, I want to tell you guys about Optio. Optio.com slash PSP. You can try the tool for six weeks. I don't know why you're still here. I mean, I told you you can do it for free. It's a great tool. You, you want to know? Okay, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because you can get things done faster. You can get inspiration to get things done faster. You can get email alerts. You can get graphical interfaces. You can get bright colors and up and down arrows to tell you, hey, this is happening. This is happening with your conversions. Did you notice this? Did you see this paused keyword that should be turned back on? Did you know that uh, there are certain brand keywords that uh, are triggering things that shouldn't be triggered? There's a problem with this ad copy. All kinds of stuff that you may never have thought of. Optio.com slash PSP. Get a six-week extended trial offered exclusively to our listeners. Thanks, Chris. And I want to thank Directive Consulting, directiveconsulting.com. As you guys can see from this episode, there is a lot that can go into Google Ads and online marketing strategy. It depends on the industry. And if you do B2B or enterprise or startup or e-commerce or retail, we recommend heading over to Directive Consulting. Those are the air, the verticals they specialize in SEO, pay-per-click, landing pages, content, conversion rate optimization, social media, everything online marketing. Directive Consulting does it. They help you get quality leads and scale those leads for your B2B and enterprise campaigns. We recommend getting a free custom proposal at directiveconsulting.com and links to both Optio and Directive Consulting will be in the show notes. So Chris, as we jump over to Patreon, um, there's going to be two things I'm going to ask you. Number one, the client reaction. When you tell people about this strategy, I want to know if they're odd or if they're scared, how that goes. And number two, I want to know how long do you run these tests and what happens? Do you just kind of run these tests forever and they work better than um, they, they work good enough to keep going? Or do you run them until you find a normal target the straightforward keywords campaign once you find those keywords? Um, I want to know what the end result is here. So we'll talk about that in Patreon. If you're interested in Patreon, and we hope you are, head over to paidsearchpodcast.com. On the homepage, we have a link to the Patreon show. It is $2 a month. No, you didn't hear that wrong. I'm just a really bad a businessman sometimes and i priced it too low initially and now we're locked in don't get me wrong i would charge <laughs> these people a lot more if i could but the way the patreon system works you can't raise the price on a tier chris knows the word tier unless you change the whole tier <laughs> if i change the tier people are going to drop off the tier and it is a risk that way so i'm locked in at two dollars it's a joke <laughs> but enjoy everyone enjoy my mistake it's two dollars a month and we do an after show every single week so we hope to see you over there and beyond that chris um i don't know i want my time on this microphone to continue i've got a lot of things to get off my chest but we'll Mm -hmm. just uh wrap up the paid search podcast here and thanks for listening